Hello, welcome back to the NPTEL online certification course on deep learning. In our previous class, we were talking about how to train a fully convolutional neural network or a deep convolutional neural network uh, to be used for semantic segmentation purpose. And we have seen there that uh, obviously, whenever we want to train a neural network uh, or a deep neural network, we need a lot of uh, ground truth data. So, for training a neural network to be used for semantic segmentation purpose, I need the original input image and the corresponding ground truth which is the semantically segmented image. And when you fade that input image, what I expect is the output of the network will be a segmented image or semantically segmented image. And for training purpose, what we have done is this output map that you get, the output map has been represented as an array of one hot vectors, where the dimensionality or the dimension of the one hot vector is same as the number of categories of objects which are present within the image. So, if we expect that the image will contain 5 different objects or 5 different regions, then my one hot vector will be of size 5. And you prepare your ground truth in the form of such arrays of one hot vectors. And for training the neural network, obviously, we need to define a loss function. So, that using the back propagation learning while performing the gradient descent training operation using back propagation learning, then uh, the loss function, the aim will be to have a gradient descent algorithm, which will try to minimize the loss with respect to the network parameters. So, in your previ previous class, we have talked about a loss function, which is pixel wise entropy loss. Today, we will talk about another loss, which is known as Dice loss. And after introducing Dice loss, again Dice loss is applicable for uh, training the neural network, which is meant for performing semantic segmentation. And then I will move on to another application of the deep neural network, uh, uh, the deconvolution network, that is the restoration purpose of a degraded image. And by restoration, what I mean is uh, removal or filtering of the noise present in an input image. So, let us see that uh, what is Dice loss and before coming to that, let me just recapitulate that what is an array of one hot vectors and how, the, how using this array of one hot vectors, we have computed the pixel wise entropy loss. So, the array of one hot vectors is something like this that your output array uh, is of the same size as that of the input image, but every element in the output array is now a one hot vector, where if a pixel within the original image belongs to a region occupied by as a horse, then in the output one hot vector at the corresponding element, the component corresponding to horse will be one and all other components will be equal to 0. So, these are the one hot vectors or what are the target vectors, but what happens is during training operation, your network may actually output something else, which is something different from this one hot vector. So, by using your target one hot vector and the actual output vector that you are getting, which is in terms of the probability that the pixel belongs to a particular category. In case of one hot vector, it gives you probability equal to 1, that the component corresponding to horse equal to 1. That means, the probability that the horse, the particular pixel belongs to horse that is equal to 1 and the probability that it belongs to any other category that is equal to 0. That is what your one horse vector tells, whereas actually the network gives you some other probability measure. So, there is a difference between your target probability and the actual probability that you get. And using these two, you can define a cross entropy, which is basically a measure of difference between your target and actually what you get. And this cross entropy loss can be minimized for training of the neural network. 
and the other loss that I was talking about what is Dye's loss. The Dye's loss actually tries to find out that how much is the overlap between the target and actual output that you get. And this overlap is computed over every category or every plane. If I consider this uh, array of 1 vectors, array of 1 hot vectors to be different planes. So, for example, this is a plane corresponding to car. So, this plane corresponds to car, this plane corresponds to horse and so on. So, if I consider those to be different planes, then in case of this uh, when I try to compute this dice loss, what I do is in every plane I try to find out that what is the amount of overlap between the target and the actual array that you are getting. And based on this overlap you try to compute a loss. So, that is what is given by what is known as dice coefficient. So, it tries to find out the overlap which is in the form of A intersection B, where A may be, may be your target array and B is the actual array that you get. So, if you take A intersection B and mod of that, that gives you the measure of what is the amount of overlap between these two. And if A and B overlaps exactly, then uh, yeah, I will have a maximum value or the maximum cardinality of A intersection B. And if I compute this dice coefficient in that case, Obviously, if they overlap exactly, then cardinality of A and cardinality B of B will be equal to same and that will also be same as the cardinality of A intersection B. So, the dice coefficient if you compute in that case, this dice coefficient will be equal to 1. Whereas, if you find, if you compute when there is no overlap, that means A intersection B becomes a null set and the cardinality of that will be equal to 0. Then whatever be the cardinality of A or the cardinality of B your dice coefficient will be equal to 0. So, in one extreme, uh, there are two extreme cases. In one extreme, there is no overlap when the dice coefficient gives you a value 0 and when there is perfect overlap, then the dice coefficient equal to 1. So, when your target and the actual what you are getting, they matches perfectly, your the dice coefficient becomes maximum and when they do not match at all, the dice coefficient becomes 0. So, using this concept, we can try to define a loss function. So, in order to find out what is A intersection B, what you can actually do is, you can multiply the two different arrays. One was your target array and the other one is the actual array in the same category plane and you multiply these two, you get the intersection of A and B. So, that is what has been shown here. So, here A intersection B, you find that my actual target, if I consider that actual target is this, this is my target array and this is the array that is given by the network. You multiply these two, then your A intersection B becomes this and in order to find out, find out the cardinality, you take simply take the sum of all the elements in this particular array and this array has been obtained by point wise or element wise multiplication of the components of A with the corresponding components or elements of B. And once I define this, then from here I can go for definition of the dice loss. So, dice loss again because I am computing this for every class. So, dice loss can be computed for every class and then sum over all the classes gives you the overall dice, dice loss. So, here it is defined in this form as we said that the dice coefficient will be equal to 1 when there is perfect overlap or perfect match and it will be equal to 0 when there is no match. Coming down to the loss function, if there is perfect match my loss should be equal to 0 and when there is no match the loss should be maximum. So, that is how this dice coefficient is computed over here. So, you find that uh, the denominator of this uh, fraction, this corresponds to mod of A intersection B and the denominator corresponds to mod A and mod of B. And this is what is actually your dice coefficient and 1 minus dice coefficient per class gives you the loss within the class. And if I take the sum of loss over all the classes, this gives me 
the overall segmentation loss and during training using back propagation and gradient descent operation you can try to minimize this loss. So, your training operation will be such that you modify the network parameters following the gradient descent where the gradient of this loss function with respect to parameters will be taken and you modify the parameters in such a way that this loss function is minimized. So, for tra training of the neural network which is meant for semantic segmentation either you can use that pixel wise cross entropy loss or I, or I can also use this dice loss for training of the neural network. Okay. Now, given this, now I want to move to another application of this deconvolution and neural networks. The application is uh, image restoration or noise filtering. And for doing that, what I need to do, what I need to uh, understand is that what is an image degradation model and why do I need filtering operation. So, let us uh, look at this. Any image capturing operation follows to, uh, I mean goes to this uh, degradation steps. So, suppose uh, my actual input image is f x y, this f x y goes to a degradation function which is h as shown over here. So, I have my actual original input image which is h, this is a degradation operator and after degradation operator I have an additive noise. So, at the output of this block I get an image g x y which is degraded and noisy image. So, the purpose of this restoration is to remove this noise and the degradation and in classical image processing operations there are various techniques for performing this task or for restoration this is what is known as restoration. So, the purpose of restoration is that I want to have an output image which is very close to my original input image f x y. And you find that in this case if your degradation operator h this becomes an identity operator then your degradation model is simply additive noise added to your input image. So, the image that we get is a noise image and in that case this restoration operation simply becomes a noise filtering operation. I do not have to consider what is my degradation operator or degradation filter. So, in today's lecture what we will talk about is how we can employ a neural network, a deep neural network or convolutional neural network for performing this image filtering operation or noise filtering operation. Now, find that when I have discussed about the training of the neural network, you find that in most of the cases the architecture of the neural network is same whether you use it for classification purpose or whether you use the neural network for segmentation purpose or you use the neural network for even noise filtering purpose. What makes the functions different is how you train your neural network. That means, how you generate your ground truth images or the images that is meant for supervised training of the deep neural network and how you define your loss function your training algorithm is same, it is the same back propagation algorithm using gradient descent. So, what are your training sets and what are and what is your loss function? You these two actually decides that what will be the function of the neural network, how the neural network will behave. So, let us see that uh, how you can use the neural network for noise filtering operation. So, by noise filtering what I mean is here on the input on the left hand side we have an image which is corrupted with additive Gaussian noise. So, you find that what is the uh, nature of the image or what is the characteristic of the image that is on the left hand side which is a noise image. By filtering what I mean is I want to remove this noise, so that I get a clean image and the clean image as shown on the right hand side. Obviously, the image that you have on the right hand side that is much better 
than your noisy image what you have on the left. So, I want that my neural network should perform this similar task that is this noise filtering operation. So, let us see how we can do it. So, a neural network which has been suggested as suggested by the authors of this paper which is an image restoration network. So, this image restoration network it is a deconvolution network where I have uh, arrays of the convolution networks followed by an arrays of a set of uh, deconvolution networks. And this particular network the deconvolution network also makes use the, uh, the concept of the skip connection that is from a convolution layer you can directly feed uh, the output of the convolution layer to the corresponding deconvolution layer, the peer deconvolution layer in the deconvolution part. And these are the skip connections that is shown over here. So, these are the skip connections that you can have. So, you find that from the convolution layer, you can have a skip connection to the deconvolution layer. So, this is the in general the architecture of the network that is used for image restoration or noise filtering purpose. Uh, now, what does this convolution layers and the deconvolution layers that actually do? You find that in this particular case the convolution and deconvolution they have mirror symmetry, right? the number of convolution uh, layers and the number of deconvolution layers they are same. The way it is reduced on the convolution side just in the inverse way the size is increased in the deconvolution side. Now, what does this convolution layer do? As we have seen before that when you perform a convolution operation, the convolution operators tries to extract uh, some abstract information or the features of the input image. And when you perform the deconvolution, the deconvolution tries to upsample these abstract information which is collected by the convolution layers and by upsampling. Uh, this information is being restored back to its original resolution. So, the operation of the convolution layer and the operation of the deconvolution layer they are just opposite. So, the convolution layer acts as the feature extractor and while it tries to extract the features in the process it eliminates the noise or the corruptions which are present within the input image. And when you perform the deconvolution operation, as the noise has been removed or has been suppressed by the convolution operator, when I try to deconvolve or upsample the input image, I restore the original size, try to restore the original resolution of the image, but because the noise was suppressed by my convolution operator, when I uh, restore the original resolution, it will be uh, 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 then the noise will be removed from that original resolution. So, you find that when you perform the convolution operation along with the removal of the noise, the convolution operator will also remove certain features of the detailed information which is present in the image. So, as a result when you perform the deconvolution operation, your original restored image or the original uh, resolution image though it will be free of the noise at the same time because the convolution layer has removed finer details of the image those, those finer details will be will also be lost from your restored image. And that is where your skip connection way plays a very, very important role. So, let us see over here uh, what this skip connection does. As you have seen that because the skip connection output of a convolution layer is directly added to a deconvolution layer, the corresponding deconvolution layer. The convolution layers which are in the shallower part for them uh, the removal of the detailed information of the image will not be that severe. 
but as you move inside the deeper layers the in detailed information will be lost more and more. So, using the skip connections what you are doing is when you are trying to deconvolve the image or trying to restore its original resolution you are actually skipping all the intermediate layers and you are getting the detailed information of the corresponding convolution layer and feeding it directly to the deconvolution layer. So, when the deconvolution layer tries to upsample the image, it will get that detailed information from its peer convolution layer. So, in the upsampled image, it will try to retain that information which it, which it receives from the peer convolution layer. That is how the detailed information in your restored image will also be maintained. The skip connection also helps in the back propagation algorithm that we have seen earlier that when the network becomes very deep or the number of layers is very large. In that case, what happens is that it suffers from a problem which is known as vanishing gradient problem. So, this skip connection that helps to solve or to avoid that vanishing gradient problem during the training of the neural network. Now, when you have this deconvolution network, the authors of these papers, they have suggested the architecture of the image restoration network or the block of the image restoration network is something like this. So, you find that I have a deconvolution layer say D 4 and the corresponding convolution layer is C 1. Corresponding to C 1 which is a convolution layer, I have the corresponding deconvolution layer D 3. So, I can have a skip connection from C 1 to D 4, I can have a skip connection from C 2 to D 3 and so on. So, when I have this skip connection, the skip connection is in between the peer layers or the corresponding layers. The authors have also compared the output, uh, compared the performance of their network with some other networks, say the networks which are fully convolutional networks. So, they have compared their result, their performance with uh, fully convolutional networks having 5 convolution layers and 5 convolutional upsampling layers, a network with 10 convolutional layers and 10 convolution upsampling layers. And the authors have suggested a deconvolution layer with deconvolution network with 5 convolution layers and 5 deconvolution layers. And as is shown in this uh, plot that the performance of this deconvolution network with 5 convolution layer and 5 deconvolution layers is much better compared to competing fully convolution layers. It is better in terms of P S A N R of the restored image. So, the other application uh, and here you find that how this uh, skip connection network improves the performance or improves the quality of the reconstructed image. Here you find that over here what we have is the noisy image and this is a restored image where skip connection was not used. So, here you find that as we said as we said before that skip connection actually feeds the details information of the image which are available in shallower layers of the convolution part to its counter deconvolution network, deconvolution layer. So, that when the deconvolution layer tries to restore the image to its original resolution, the detailed image information will also be available. And if I do not use such skip connections, this detailed image information will be lost. And that is what has been shown over here. So, this is the output without skip connection and this is the output that you get with skip connection. And if you compare these two restored images, it is quite obvious that the quality of the image that you get with skip connection is much better than the quality of the image that you get without skip connection. Simply convolution deconvolution layers, but there is no skip connection operation. And uh, it is also uh, visible in terms of improved uh, PSNR. 
you find that without skip connection the PSNR is very poor and when you use the skip connection the PSNR value is quite large. So, this skip connection helps both for improvement of the quality of the restored image as well as it helps in training of the neural network. Now, again the most important part as we said that how do you train this neural network and as we said that for training of this neural network I need the ground truth. That means, I have to have an input noisy image and I have to have the corresponding clean image. So, the way you try to train uh, your neural network is you feed the input to the neural network at the output of the deconvolution layer at the final output layer you get the reconstructed image or the restored image. I want that restored image should be same as the clean image and this noisy and clean image pair is used for training of this neural network. So, you compute what is the error between the reconstructed image and the clean image and using back propagation and gradient descent you try to minimize this error. So, the error function in this case will be something like this. So, my input pair is x i y i where x i is the noisy image and y i is the clean image. And what my network gives is is a function of x i and theta where theta is the network parameter. And my loss function is f x i theta minus y i y where y i is the clean image and uh, this f x i is the restored image restored by the neural network x i being the noisy image and y i is the corresponding clean image you compute what is the error between these two. And some of these errors over all the training images that gives you the loss function which is l theta or theta is the network parameter. And then you try to minimize this loss function iteratively using your gradient descent approach back propagation approach to update the network parameters theta and that is how the network is to be trained. And once the network is trained then given an input noisy image the network will give you an output image which is a clean image or the noise filtered image. There are other applications uh, as has been suggested over uh, the same approach is in low dose CT denoising. You find that when you compute uh, when you take the x ray CT images, if you increase uh, the x ray energy or the dose then uh, your image will become clean. But if you reduce the radiation energy the image will be noisy as is shown over here. So, you can use the similar technique similar denoising noising technique using the deep convolution deconvolution networks for cleaning these images. So, this example shows that uh, again for training purpose I need the clean uh, low dose image and the high dose image pair clean image and noise image pair for training of the network and once the network is trained and this is the architecture of the network that can be used for this denoisy purpose denoising purpose which is same as that skip connection network. And uh, this is uh, one of the an example result that uh, on the left hand side what you have is a low dose CT image. This is the normal CT image and in the middle what you have a CT image which is restored by a trained deep neural network. The advantage is that if you have a low dose image then many of the uh, nodules in the image may be missing which may create a problem for diagnosis based on the CT images. So, once you have a cleaned image then the diagnosis becomes much more reliable. So, in today's lecture we have talked about one of the loss functions that is the dice loss which can be used for training a neural network meant for the semantic segmentation purpose and we have talked about another application of uh, this uh, deep neural network which is for denoising of the noisy image. So, with this we will uh, stop our discussion on the discriminative networks. In our next class 
we will start talking about the generative network. As we said that your deep learning is uh, there are two different aspects. One is for classification aspect which is the discriminating network and the other one is generating aspect which is done by generative network or generative learning. So, in our next class we will talk about how we can have a generative neural network. Thank you.